Bonjour et bienvenue à Tour de Creer's Advice. My name is Marilac, Charles de Marilac. And this is my cat, also called Charles de Marilac. I'm here to tell you what it takes to be an ambassador in mid 16th century Europe. To be honest, I thought diplomacy would be all dinner jackets, Ferrero Rocher, and working the room. I was mistaken, wasn't I, Charles? So, how it all began. Ever since I was a little boy, I knew I was a people person. I'm a chatter, a, a girl, and I have a very fine memory for names and faces. And when I was a boy, I knew the world was full of interesting people with ways of life very different to my own. Merchants and traders from far away lands would pass by our little town on their way to Paris, and I watched their caravans of Arabian horses, wagons of strange-smelling fruits and spices, and their retinue, people conversing in strange and musical tongues. <laughs> Sometimes I would run alongside them for a while, and they would tell me snatches of tales about the places they had been, with spires of gold and staircases of ivory, and of the creatures they had seen, unicorns and sea monsters. Most of all, I was enchanted by the travellers themselves, the differences, robes of saffron and scarlet, coiled headscarves of turquoise and ultramarine, and the similarities when they told me of their families, their hardships, fears and desires. I decided when I was a man, I would go and see the world and meet many wonderful people. My father suggested I become a soldier, travel to different countries, meet new people and interesting people. But then you had to kill them. And to be honest, that wasn't my style. At heart, I suppose I am a man devoted to God and to peace. But the former seems very busy at the moment and the latter is in scarce supply. My devotion to God is what got me into official diplomacy. The king had heard that I was reform-minded and well. Basically, he sent me abroad to get me out of the way. I ended up in Constantinople. It was a city of dreams, jeweled buildings, facades of many magnificent marbles, colourful people in sumptuous silks, <laughs> sweet comely pastries and cooling mint tea. People calling and chatting in many languages, some of which I learned, <laughs> c'est magnifique. And best of all, working for my cousin, the ambassador, we accomplished great things. Not only a military alliance, which personally I wasn't bothered about, but a commercial treaty that would see us cooperating and trading peacefully with people so different in religions than ourselves. C'est bon, it could be done. I left Constantinople with high hopes of what diplomacy could achieve. Next, I was sent to England. Well, I had no idea what to expect, but I'd seen Albine's portrait of Henry VIII and he looked like a fine, upstanding man. And I'd heard England was a tropical island renowned for its fine dining and sandy beaches. But I think something may have been lost in translation. Honestly, it was a nightmare. Most of the people I met were okay, but everyone was scared or intimidated by their strange, unpredictable king. Innocence was no safeguard against being arrested, tortured or killed for alleged treason. The violence, oppression, suffering and persecution I saw affected me greatly. Most troubling for me, a man of faith, was to see religious hatred whipped up by people in power and by people who wanted power and to see personal paranoia given a twisted religious flavour. My experience of the people I'd met in Europe and beyond is that people of all religions and way of life can and should live side by side and amongst one another in peace. But as my career progressed, I could see that it was not possible. After England, given my experience of dealing with difficult people, I was sent all over Europe, to Switzerland, the imperial court, to the courts of the German princes. I was even sent to an important meeting at Mark to discuss peace with England. Also, even after my years at the English court, I still could not understand the people of this confusing land. 
the constant apologizing, the random executions, and the belief that everything can be solved with a cup of tea. Anyway, after my travels were over, I became Bishop of Vaughan, and then Archbishop of Vienne. I was greatly worried when I heard of the increasing tension and violence between the Catholics and Protestants. I spoke up when I heard of the greedy absentees taking French bishoprics and their revenues, and I tried to speak up for what I believed to be right when I was a member of the Privy Council, namely civic toleration, peace and non-violence. <laughs> well, the powerful Guises did not like this and made me leave court to see out the rest of my days in the countryside. So, hello. Here I am today, finally living in peaceful life with lots of interesting creatures in my own home. I often sit in the shade of an oak tree, wondering what will happen to the people of this big wild world of ours if we can't tolerate and accept one another. And my best bit of advice for you if you want to become an ambassador and work with people, don't. Work with animals instead. They're much nicer, aren't they, Charles? Ah, merci. Other types of chocolate are available.